Welcome to Torpedo Fish Radio, crossing the great divide between one mind and another. Today's show is about gender transition. My guest is Sam Landemore, who's a singer and songwriter from Northern Virginia and someone whom I'm accustomed to calling Sarah. One of the things I want to do with this podcast and this site is to encourage people to ask the questions that you're afraid will make you look stupid. Uh, One reason why I wanted to talk to Sam in particular is that I knew he wouldn't make me feel stupid. Here's Sam Landemore. Catch us all up to some of what you've been going through for the last couple of years. Uh, I started uh, considering gender transition around about 2005 when I was living in Richmond, Virginia, I had tripped over, um, actually at the time I was attempting to come out at the age of, uh, in my 40s as a dyke, as a lesbian, uh, having had no experience with women, uh, I had been married before, uh, to a, de- to a dude, and, uh, so I came out as a dyke to no avail, um, it, you know, <laughs> I never met anybody, never dated anybody. And my, I was drawn towards the masculine end of the spectrum in the lesbian community for myself. And also I found uh, masculine women attractive. So here I am, I fancy myself a butch, and all my little lesbian friends were saying, no, you're soft butch. And I said, no, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be called soft butch. So I started studying up on uh, lesbian culture and butch sensibilities, and somehow in there... I tripped over uh, female to male uh, trans transsexuals and transgender people. Okay, I'm gonna interrupt you for a second or stop. What I want to know is, were you attracted to women? Somewhat, somewhat, but um, essentially I'm bisexual. There's some women I'm attracted to. I'm not attracted to femininity per se, though. No. Okay. I'm going to bookmark that for a second. Okay. Because what I want to know is, um, it's. let's just assume that you were in, investigating uh, lesbianism or... Um, Mostly butch, butch identity. Butch-tude because you felt like you needed to change something or that something felt off to you. Is that... Yeah, yeah. I was pretty um, uh, repressed. <laughs> My folks were very conservative. Uh-huh. And basically... I figured that if I was ever going to look into whether or not I was a lesbian or not, it was going to happen after my parents died. And so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the thing that, that I, I'm curious about is that I, when I knew you before, I would consider you, you seemed kind of butch to me, but you were straight. Mm-hmm. So, um, was that not working, just to, to be... Um. Well, see, the way I look at it, um, people say gender is in your head and mm-hmm. sex is in your pants, but uh, sex is what you do at, at home with your honey. Gender, I think, is when you get up in the morning, you get dressed and walk out the door. That's gender. It's who you are when you're walking down the street. And I felt uncomfortable in that um, in that role because as a female because... I never felt female, uh-huh. even and as a child. So, so now how does that mean? Like, okay, when you did you play with like stuffed animals or dolls? Did you have one that was like your spokesperson? You know what I <laughs> no. mean? You didn't have like one no. that was like this is you. No. Because I know that when I was a kid, I had one, and it was a male. It was a oh, little bear. Well, yeah. it's interesting that when I write, um, mm-hmm. when I'm writing a song. The voice in my head is male mm-hmm. when I'm writing, uh-huh. which is I always thought was kind of interesting. Well, I think that's kind of significant. And when I mean, you're a few years older than I am, but in the '70s there were people like Renee Richards and uh, right. I guess before that was like Wendy Walter, Wendy Carlos. Mm-hmm. Were you aware of people like that? Yeah, I was aware of uh, male to female transsexuals, but I t- I was telling uh, my friend here that I'm visiting. That it, this is the way. This is the way society trains women. I thought that it was not going to be allowed for women to transition to male. Because it would be sort of a privilege. That they yeah, right. Uh huh. 
You know, I really thought because so much of my life, my early life was girls don't do this and girls don't do that, and close your legs and cross your ankles because that's what girls do. And it's, they were constantly trying to get me to close my legs. Not that I was uh, a loose child, but um. <laughs> right. But but they knew that that you were what I don't know. They called it tomboy. A tomboy, or, yeah. And did your family discourage that? Were they trying to get into Immensely. The really? I wanted to play the drums. Girls uh-huh. don't play the drums. I wanted to play the trumpet. Girls don't play the trumpet. I wanted to play the guitar. Girls don't play the guitar. And uh-huh. I said, hold up. <laughs> and I finally prevailed and got a guitar. Growing up here in Alexandria in the Washington area, um, if you haven't gone to college, you pretty much, you know, you go downtown and take the civil service exam Mm -hmm. and i fought against that because that would mean i'd have to work in an office and wear a dress oh right so it affected my career choices um and the jobs that are available to me Uh uh-huh you know so so um so your interest in um gender transition has to do with the way you present yourself yeah to the outside okay so you uh you'd experimented with becoming a butch lesbian that didn't work for you um it's interesting that you were accused of being a soft butch yeah which what what did that how was that explained to you um they would just kind of shrug their shoulders and say no you're not you're not a total butch and i'm but they could not quantify it or define it for me so you just said i don't want to be that well you know it I don't know. It, it it wasn't about the women. The more I thought about it, mm-hmm. it was more about who I was uh-huh. and my own masculinity. And, and um, when did you first start thinking that might be something that's possible for you? Around about 2005 when I started uh, watching YouTube videos of uh, transgender guys uh, going through their transitions. Uh-huh. Uh, by and large, they're younger. Uh-huh. And... I started making YouTube videos because I didn't see a lot of older people. I was 49 when I started uh, in um, 2009 when I started investigating it. And, um, yeah, I started making videos and getting involved in that whole discussion on YouTube and and, and other areas on the Internet. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the things that I guess I'm curious about is... When you feel like um, you don't, you feel more like a like like a man. Mm-hmm. What does that feel like? Um, it feels like I don't want I want mm, people to understand that I under that I know what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it, women are are spoken down to mm-hmm. and condescended to and. I didn't like that, and and uh, some of it is physical. I am very, very uncomfortable having breasts. Really? And yeah, I was I was mortified when they appeared. <laughs> I was not at all pleased with my pubescent body. Uh-huh. I was surprised. What was your um, what was your body like as a child? I was really skinny. Mm-hmm. It was real skinny, very small, mm-hmm. and I was allowed to run around in the summertime with no shirt on until I was about eight years old, and then all bets were off, and all of a sudden I had to wear a shirt, and I played with these boys on my street, and they were running around with no shirts on, and I uh, idolized my brothers and wanted to do everything they did, too, uh-huh. and so I just didn't understand why I wasn't developing the same way they were. Okay, um, when did you start dating? Uh, not until I was 19. And well, no, I had, I, had a, I had a couple, one or two boyfriends in high school. But, so, but I felt very awkward about it. I felt like I had to learn how to be a girl. So you, were you dating boys who expected you to act, quote, yeah. like a girl? And yeah. Was that like... It, it was uncomfortable. It was like, I don't know, it... it it's hard to describe. I, I didn't like the female role. I don't have a problem with the, uh, my nether bit south of the belt line, but uh-huh. uh, some people do. Some people have a real hard time with that, both uh, uh, 
female to male and male to female people, mm-hmm. you know, but everybody is a bit different in what their hang up is, mm-hmm. you know. So when you eventually you got married, when did you get married? In 1991. And were you able to have a complimentary relationship as a you know husband and wife that felt okay to you? To a degree, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, my my ex husband is. Um, it, it was like I was the masculine energy, and he was kind of the feminine uh-huh. energy. It's and I think a lot of the men that I end up with are like that. Uh huh. Um, nerd boys. So, and you, you, let's go back to what you were saying about, um, your parents being sort of very traditional in terms of how they view gender roles. Um, one thing that I was wondering is, once they, they both died, when, when did they? My dad died in 94 and my mom died in 2000. So, after that, what I want to know is, could you not just have continued to present yourself the way you have been, which was kind of an androgynous mm-hmm. woman. Because it's, it's the boobs. <laughs> it's <Okay>. the boobs <laughs> and the voice and the ass uh-huh. and, you know, um, testosterone does make some changes in your body. It's, it's not made me into, uh, you know, a bodybuilder. Uh-huh. Uh, what it does, uh, when women take testosterone, your, your fat from your fanny and your thighs migrates to your tummy. Really? Yeah. That and that's a, a result of testosterone. Yeah. I was wondering how. Um, that's why uh, probably why um, Chaz Bono looks a bit portly. Uh huh. Although Chaz did look a yeah. bit portly before. <laughs> yeah. The whole process is not um, uh, linear in terms of you have a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's your transition. I think transition is a lifelong thing. Um, my appearance is going to continue to change for the next six years. I've been on testosterone for one year. I've got a great voice from it, but my appearance is still a little bit uh, fluid. And I was off of testosterone for a couple of months because of a health problem. But, um, but yeah, I it, it's crazy. It's a process, mm-hmm. and it challenges all of my beliefs and the way I thought I understood the world. And it also gives me a chance to look at men and women and go, you guys have a lot more in common than you think you mm-hmm. do. It drives me crazy to be around men and women who go, oh, well, men do this and women do that. Oh, it's because you're a man or it's because you're a woman. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, it's because you believe you have to act that way. So here's something that I, I was thinking about asking you before. What is masculinity? Ah. Um... That's a good question. I don't know if I can answer it. Um, I think I saw masculinity as strength and and confidence. And I don't know. I mean, I, I as a child, I, I did not want breasts. I fought bitterly against wearing dresses at every turn. Mm-hmm. It just was... I felt... In a dress, I feel... I felt even before transition, if I wore a dress, I looked like John Madden in a dress. Mm-hmm. That's what I saw in the mirror. So I could have long hair, mm-hmm. and I still thought I looked like a man in a dress. It was, it's weird. I understand what you mean. And <clears throat> so tell me what you, have you thought about, okay, so actually, it's probably better to just talk about what the process is. And also, sure. I assume that you... From what I understand, in order to start the process, you probably need to go through some psychological mm. assessment so they make sure that that's what you really... Yeah, so um, there like? are the... Um, they were called the Harry Benjamin Standards of Care, but now they're called something else. But um, there are doctors uh, who have come up with guidelines that essentially say that you should be in therapy for three to six months with someone who's at least a you know, a psychologist or a psychiatrist, mm-hmm. MD of some sort, um, you do some therapy and find out that's really what, you know, you want. And they also recommend that you do a, quote, real-life test mm-hmm. where you wear exclusively the clothes of the gender that you're shooting for mm-hmm. and 
tell people that you have, you know, the name that you want to be, mm -hmm. you, you know, and you have to sort of come out to people and say, the game is changing up here. I'm going to be doing this and, you know, and help people understand that they need to change pronouns mm -hmm. and say he instead of she and that kind of thing. And if you can get through that real life test and, and really feel like that's the thing to do, then you can talk about hormones and hormone therapy. Uh, I mean, it's different for everyone because for one thing, I mean, there are very young people who do transition, mm -hmm. uh, teens and preteens, but that's generally done with their, their parents' involvement. Um, and I, I totally support the idea that young people really do need their parents' support and uh, a lot of professional counseling and a lot of thought before they embark upon this. But it's not as much about surgery as people seem to think. It's not okay. a sex change, <clears throat> necessarily. But there are some people who that really, really... Yeah, know. and uh, but that happens after a lot of therapy and after a certain amount of time on hormones because this isn't covered by most insurance. Mm -hmm. So for me to get what is called top surgery, to have a male chest construction which is a double mastectomy with uh, male chest reconstruction, um, it's about seven or $8,000 uh, that I don't have. <laughs> so right now, um, were there any kind of weeding questions that your therapist asked you, like just to make sure, you know what I mean? Well, no, not really. Um, what I'm doing, because I, I am the age that I am, and I have been in various forms of therapy in various times of my life, um... I worked with my therapist for about three, four months, and I just kept coming back to it. Now, I'm still seeing the guy, you know, a year and a half later. I mean, you know, for whatever reason, I've got other issues. But, um, yeah, he. I did not go ahead until he told me he thought that I was doing better with my anxiety and well, PTSD issues, you know. And you have a male therapist. Mm -hmm. Is that intentional? Did you... I tend to to um, get along with males better. Okay, so it wasn't just you would have normally gravitated to a male therapist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so when did you start uh, taking hormones? Is that the first step after the no? Reality? Well, yeah, that Where, was, was after the real life test. The real life okay. test, yeah. I th to I think I was in therapy for about three months uh, before he said that. Three, four, maybe five months before I, he said that I could look into testosterone, and I asked some transgender friends of mine for a recommendation of a an MD who would uh, provide that. And when I went to the MD, he didn't. Uh, according to the standards of care, you need to have a letter from a certain high therapist, like uh -huh. a psychiatrist or psychologist. And um, I didn't have a letter, but this doctor. Uh, went ahead and, and started me on the testosterone, and that was in November of 2009. And um, so there's a six-year process? Well, it takes about six years. It can take six years or more for the testosterone to work on someone my age uh -huh. so that I would be completely and totally 100% passable. If I were 18, uh -huh. I you would probably not recognize me. By now. Really? Yeah. So it's just a little more slow acting. Yeah, action. because I'm not young and growing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so what are some of the changes that I might see in you in a few more years? Um, well, I think my voice is about gone where it's going to go. My facial hair is very uh, sparse right now. Uh -huh. It's taking a long time to come in. Uh-huh. Uh, so... So you I, don't have to shave yet or anything? Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, you do? I shave my face. I'm trying to cultivate a mustache. Uh -huh. my, the mustache <laughs> I'm cultivating is very funny because um, I, I... The only reason why I have a mustache uh -huh. is because I hit menopause <laughs> before I started testosterone. Uh -huh. So, so I had a menopausal mustache. mustache. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, on steroids, steroids, literally. But if you didn't shave, you'd have like a beard or uh, just stubble. Oh, it's stubble. it's like random stubble. 
I get some underneath my chin. Uh -huh. It's not uncommon for uh, transgender guys to have like uh, hair uh, uh, on their neck, but not breaking the jawline. So we all look huh. like we're like um, Amish or something. <laughs> But after the hormone treatment is complete, will you be able to grow a full beard? Well, it's, there's no completing it. I'll oh, be on it for the rest of my life. Yeah. But I guess it it has to... It look. takes... Well, think of it this way. When you go on testosterone, or if you go on estrogen as a, a male to female, yeah. you're, you're triggering puberty. Oh. And so, from oh. my facial <laughs> hair, I would say I'm about 16. Yeah. And so, as much time as it takes an actual bio kid uh, uh -huh. to go through puberty, that's what I got to look forward to. Can you go back? Um, my voice will not go back. Uh, the facial hair will continue to grow, but it would be more sparse. If I were to lose any hair, that wouldn't come back either. Oh, yeah. I've been Do blessed people go enough. back? I mean, is it... I don't know much about that. I, I think that's a contentious subject. I mean, some people say only 1% of uh, trans folks go back, but, you know, it's, like I said, it's not linear. Some people will, and I'm only speaking for female to male, mm -hmm. you can start out thinking that you want to be very masculine, kind of stereotypical guy, mm -hmm. and you get going on the journey, as we call it, and you discover that's really not you. Hmm. And so there are trans guys who are very effeminate and identify as effeminate gay men. Or they, they might feel that after a certain amount of time on testosterone, they're happy with the way they look and they live in kind of a gen, what they call gender queer, kind of an androgynous. You know, so it, it's a matter of what's comfortable for people for them to over overcome their anxiety about the way the body they were born in, basically. The thing that everybody wants to talk about is the genitalia. And you've talked and about it. Actually. I don't. I don't want a penis. I don't need a penis. Did you ever experiment with that, though? I mean, I, I, I know about the Packers some of the stuff. And, no, just based on some of the things that I've um, seen you post on Facebook at mm -hmm. one point. <laughs> you talked about going to a meeting with everybody and they had their dicks in their hands or something. Oh yeah, like, yeah, what yeah. Was that? I mean, what? It's, there's a. a a thing called a soft packer mm -hmm. that you can wear. Now, I don't know what its use is just generally, generically, mm -hmm. if you were to find one in a sex store, why people have those. But it, it, it's, a, it's a soft replica of a penis. And you can actually get a hole through the shaft using like a, a hot, heated up rod mm -hmm. and put some hose through there with a little medicine spoon on the end and pee through it. Wow. If you're a female to male, uh -huh. so it's it's a little difficult to do if you're a chub, chubby person though, because it's it's it works better for skinny guys. Uh -huh. And some guys, it's called packing. Some guys wear it um, either in a, like a little harness or a jock strap or just in their underpants because it makes them feel more complete mm -hmm. or more passable, mm -hmm. that they should have a bulge in their pants, mm -hmm. you know, like other guys when they sit down, mm -hmm. you know. And I go up and down with that. Uh, most of the time I feel uncomfortable with it because I'm afraid it's going to fall out. <laughs> <laughs> Does it look like a penis? Yeah, yeah. So it's sort of sculpted? And yeah, it's just it? a flaccid it's, penis. It's made out of? Uh, cyber skin, usually. Cyber skin, I don't think that is. Oh, we have to talk. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, it's a, a synthetic, it's a plastic that's used for, um, dildos. Okay. So you dildos. kind of tried that out, but it sounds like you're not. I have one and I use it sometimes, but you know, it's something I keep going back and forth with, you know. And, um. My, my big hang up is the top. I really want to get the top surgery. Mm -hmm. Are you perceived how are you i it goes back and forth it depends i don't know how or why but like i was at a concert and all the male ushers were clocking me as male hmm. and all the female ushers were clocking me as female 
do you mean so they're I, you? Oh, I, this is a recognizing, uh, seeing me as... How did, you, how did you know? Because they call you sir or ma'am. Oh, so they... You I get you. this sir or ma'am all day long. What about restrooms? I, I use the men's room. And if it has a stall. Okay. And I sit down just like girls do. Did, has anybody ever questioned that? Mm-mm. Had, did anybody ever question you going to a ladies' room? Ever? When I was younger. When I was younger. Yeah. Uh -huh. When I was a kid, yeah, I was like, oh, little boy, you're going in the wrong room. Uh -huh. I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I remember um, one of your album covers, you had a picture of a boy. That's my dad. I, I knew that it was afterwards, but I thought that was you. Uh, yeah, I thought that was, that, that, yeah. It was a beautiful blonde... Yeah. Um, kind of almost a feminine man. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it reminded me of, if you have ever seen the book by uh, Truman Capote called Other Voices, Other Rooms. No. There's a picture of him, one of the editions. Uh, I never regarded that picture of my dad as being feminine. But... It, it looks like the picture of Truman Capote that is on the back of one of the editions of oh, Earth, which is a beautiful picture. But, yeah, I thought, is this, you know, Sarah? Is this, mm -hmm. oh, what's your dad's first name? Frank. Frank. Um, so you initially chose the name Tim, is that right? Initially I chose Hank, Hank. <laughs> then it was Tim. And, why and Tim? Tim was, now, where we're sitting here doing this interview is across the street from my ancestral home. Uh -huh. And I used to dress up in my brother's Boy Scout uniform oh. and go out the back door and come around to uh -huh. the front and knock on the door and announce myself as Timothy in a, in a Cub Scout uniform. To your own house? Yeah. Well, how old were you? Uh, well, uh, probably six, mm -hmm. announced myself as Timothy, and they would, hey, here's Timothy, and come on in for dinner, and they'd make a big deal of it, and until one day it was like, no, we're not doing it, no, no, no. How old were you then? Probably about seven or eight, yeah. So they just decided? It's, nope, that's it. Um, okay, and now Sam. Yeah. Why Sam? Because I couldn't do my signature with a T. <laughs> So I had to find something that was an S. And it's kind of like Sarah, so it's not yeah. that hard for people to... Yeah, and people Although say, it's well, it's me. kind of gender neutral, and it's like, well, that's the last thing I really wanted, but... Yeah, why, right. I don't not? really want to be gender neutral. I just want to be seen as yeah, a God. dude and full stop and and don't treat me like an idiot. And, you know. Now, people are nicer to me when they I think said, I'm male. I was wondering about that. Say more about that. It, it's it, I get faster service. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's it's crazy. People take me seriously. Now, do you think? Hmm. So I've never really had the experience of being a hot babe either. You oh know? come on! No, <laughs> I mean come on! I'm you know oh, kind of well. an androgynous person and. Well, you were always a cutie though. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Suddenly, I do feel feminine. Um. But, you know, they have a certain amount of power. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. So... Oh, it's crazy the way things are working out now because I'm perceived as male. There's a bar that I go to in Indianapolis to play music, mm -hmm. and girls will come up to me, and they start acting really stupid. <gasps> oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, did you notice... And then I, I had to turn to one of my friends, my do male you like friends. That? I mean, do you like it? Well, it's... Well, well, it, you know, let, let me just... Here, I'll be a little shrinky here. Okay. <laughs> okay. There is an aspect of of your uh, psyche that you do not like being a woman, and you associate it with being disrespected, right, mm -hmm. and being less intelligent, mm -hmm. less confident, and having fewer options. Having fewer options. So maybe is it possible that what they're actually doing is just being more sexual towards you, being more feminine, but you feel that it's more stupid? Is that? Possible, really I think they stupid? really, they, women uh, come up to me and apparently they're flirting, mm -hmm. but they're acting so inane. Well, what does that I look feel like? bad for them. <laughs> what, how would that look? I mean, what would they, they just kind of like toss their heads around uh -huh. and like act like they're stupid when I know they're not. That's interesting. Did you notice, that, I know that you watched that. Um, I noticed that when I was presenting as female and trying to. Uh, connect with males mm -hmm. they didn't they seemed intrigued to talk to me because she did not like that. I can apparently carry on a conversation they viewed me as intelligent mm -hmm. but when last call came around they turned around to the blonde behind them and that hurt and yeah you know 
I mean, if you could, if you could make your way in the world as, you know, who you are, but I guess you really don't like the press. I was going to say, yeah, it's, I think uh, my, my, I'm really just getting into the very first part of transition. And I understand from other guys that once you have the top surgery, it's a whole different ball game. Really? That's yeah, better? Or... That's better. It's a, a big relief. Wow. You know, even if they might be overweight and they don't want to take their shirt off in public, uh -huh. t-shirts actually fit. I mean, I'm, I showed you before, I'm wearing a compression vest. Mm -hmm. This is a gynecomastia vest that I got from underworks.com. Wow. And it's for men's gynecomastia. Oh, wow, like the bro, whatever yeah, that is. Yeah, the, the, the man boobs. <laughs> what is that thing that, that this? And Seinfeld, somebody invented it. Um, I thought they were man boobs. That bro. was the, a bro boobs? No, the bra. That oh, oh, yeah, the, the, the bro. bro, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, what were you, I mean, you're like a... But they, your, what they do is flatten it. What's your bra size? Um, let me see one. What's your Rather, cup size? About C. Okay, so I guess that's a pretty respectable. Yeah, and anything. once you get over about D, it's difficult to bind, as we call it. So, so you're going to go to, from a C to, I guess, an A, or whatever. Is there so, a, a male a, chest. A nothing, a male chest, and it's and they be, And they take the nipples off. Mm -hmm. and then, but males have nipples. Yeah, they take them off and then reposition them, because oh. they're down here. Oh. And, and the areola is too big, so they shave that down. So, um, it sounds kind of painful. Yeah, where the breast meets the chest, that's where the incision is. And does that scare you at all? The pain? No. So you are excited about it? Yeah, if I could ever get it. Because of the money or something? Yeah. Is that the only obstacle? Yeah. And what about clothes? Have you thought about, you know, what your style is going to be? It's or? Yeah, I'm still trying to figure that out. I had a friend who kind of didn't get it and said that, they like the way Ellen DeGeneres dressed, oh, right. and I'm just, like, not going for the lesbian look here anymore. But, you know, maybe, you know... So I'm going for kind of a generic guy, and I, I feel like I'm, like, uh, you know, the beaver. I, I'm, like, wearing these kind of, like, you know, kind of dorky boy uh -huh. just shirts that I... Little plaid shirts and, and, and jeans, and, and I just feel like uh, beaver cleaver. You know, but I mean, I take it that's not what you want eventually. Mm, I don't know what I am. Maybe I am a total nerd. I don't know. So you might end up being like an IT guy. <laughs> I don't know. I might. I might. But I, how can you have thought about? I mean, if I were doing this, I would be constantly toying. Because with the body, it, there's only so much you can do until your body changes. But you could do it in Second Life. I mean, you could imagine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, I'm like, okay, I'll tell you. Yeah. If I was going to be a guy, I'd a lot of people do like, that. Uh, a lot of people. You don't do that. Um, not much, because I'm really, I've never been really much of a fashion maven. But, I mean, you could be John Madden or whatever. <laughs> you could be, yeah. uh... I think what it has to do with is the fact that I have kind of, uh, adopted, I adopted a kind of a sweatshirt and jeans kind of wardrobe for mm -hmm. so long, <laughs> I don't know what else to wear. <laughs> so you're probably not going to be like, um... You know, wearing designer clothes. Right, or, that's probably not... Uh, yeah, and I'm not going to be, you know, drilling holes in my face or getting a right. little hawk. So you're going to be like a regular guy, probably. Yeah, pretty much. I could see yeah. you, like, this comedian called Louis C.K. You know that guy? Oh, I don't know. Oh, he's really funny, but uh, he's kind of like a regular guy, like, I don't know. I, I yeah, he doesn't picture. look like much like anything. The, yeah. And how about activities? Like, are you better at certain things now that you started hormone treatment, like... Chaz was saying, Chaz Boney was saying, like, she didn't have time for much of the conversation that she used to. Yeah. She was more into gadgets and doing things. Um, I don't, it has taken out a lot of anxiety and a lot of background noise. What's that? Uh, in terms of, uh, chatter in my head and worry about, you know, I mean, it's difficult to walk around and I'm still worried about how I'm perceived, and I, you know, dwell on that a bit, but it's easier to concentrate on things, I think, and it's also easier for me to recognize drama, <laughs> and that I don't want to be involved in it, mm -hmm. and it's a little easier for me to say no to things now. Oh, yeah, a lot of women yeah. 
have a hard time saying no. Yeah. So you can be more direct. Mm -hmm. Well, I always was direct, though. When you, um, are you still performing at all? I just started performing again. Um, I um, stopped performing 10 years ago Wait, because, just, yeah. I want to, see, I'm assuming, I have to tell our listening audience that you are a singer-songwriter. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, no, you, uh -huh. I guess what I was going to ask you, and then we can kind of magically um, transition into what you're about to say. When you performed before, did your gender presentation pose any problems for you? Because when you are on stage, it's really, so there's something about that light being on you, and it's, especially as a soloist, mm -hmm. and especially because so many performers, um, a lot of the appeal has to do with their femininity. Or, mm -hmm. Did that ever make it harder to be on stage? For yeah, you? because, well, I felt like I couldn't compete because I was always stuck in these... And, and this is a bone of contention I have with the music business. Um, women songwriters are not taken seriously. Really? You think? I mean, have you ever seen a male singer-songwriter stage? What do you mean, a... A male singer-songwriter stage? Like yeah, men in the round. Like a festival where they're doing little Men in like, the round at a yeah. folk festival. I, um, no, you don't see that. Really? I just, you, see, you see the bill and it's like, uh, you know, it's like women in the round and it's five women songwriters and it's almost as if... Oh, you're saying it like takes, it, it could takes, be, happen to be all men, but they wouldn't call it a men's... Right. Okay, I gotcha. So it's and, like and it's, it's like it takes five women to <laughs> yeah. equal one male songwriter. Oh, so you're saying that men can sort of be, I don't know, Sam. I, men get away with a lot more than women do, and women don't really get very far, uh, in folk music anyway, unless they're pretty, and they have a pretty lilting voice, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, and I did not fit that mold, and I cuss like a sailor, mm -hmm. and there was one, uh, I have been told many times that I was was not going to be booked because I was too blue <laughs> or um you know and I just didn't fit the airy fairy kind of stereotype mm -hmm. of a female folk singer and that just frustrated the hell out of me because I couldn't do that it wasn't me I totally know what you mean <laughs> I mean you know uh, it's like okay well she's blonde and she has an expensive guitar and mm -hmm. She may or may not play very well, but yeah. she's got a good band behind her, and she's got 20 gigs, and I've got one, you know. Yep. You I know. know what you mean. And she's selling, you know, when they go to buy the albums, the, yeah. the crickets at your thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, everybody's... Everybody's you know, over there, and my chicken. stuff is just sitting there gathering dust. <laughs> yeah. I mean, did it ever, like, as you are getting dressed to go to a gig, did you ever think, God, I don't know what I want to wear, you know. No, I had a uniform. I always wore like Oxford shirts and uh -huh. jeans. Well, that's that was my cool. that was my stage uniform. And How do your fans feel about this? You know? I don't know. I mean, I, they seem to be okay with it, but it's 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 funky because I started. I I didn't perform for about a year that I've been on testosterone because I was afraid of what was. I didn't want my voice to go out of control on <laughs> stage. But now I'm trying to sing my old stuff, and here I come on this, this song called Tattoo, mm -hmm. and there's a line in there, and I'm just singing away, and would you like to be my beau, and can I be your bride, and I'm standing up there going, no, this doesn't work. No, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. This, you're so it's, it's confusing. Me. Like, yeah. why, why would it even occur to you to write that line if you felt, I mean, I... That was before. That's yeah, an old but song. Before you were talking about being uncomfortable, being a woman, and you didn't want to. I mean, you're going to be my beau and my bride. That sounds sounds like Scarlett O'Hara. Well, it's like being accepted. So or do you being think you loved. were putting this on and you didn't really feel that way, or did you really feel that way? Um, like I'm going to be your bride. That is a very like 1950s almost yeah. kind of femininity. Yeah. Well, it's not femininity. Or it was just like you know is. wanting. Someone to Something love to you. To carry over the threshold and wear yeah. that white dress. Did you wear a white oh, dress? Oh no, not not that. Just to be, just to be um, with someone to get a commitment from someone, you know. But I mean, you see what I'm saying? That yeah. you could have said it in a more hey baby, way, let's less... be partners. <laughs> no, I mean <laughs> yeah. not even that. I mean, you could be my guy and I'll be your girl. That's yeah. But to be my beau, my bride, that is like 
picking you know, on bended knee, yeah. you know, picking you up, opening the door for yeah. you. That is what that to me. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I'm not uh, trying to um, draw any conclusions, but it's striking to me that. Well, I think it's not unusual for. For a lot of trans guys, too, some of them go through a hyper-feminine really? phase to try to deny it and say, well, maybe I'm just doing it wrong. I just have to get used to this. And, uh-huh. you know, you know, and, and you try to get along. You, know, you try to survive. It's not easy being a woman. I mean, being no, a it's feminine not. woman, it is like, what is that person said? Women are not born, they're made. Not. There's a, a person I saw online... Um, and I think this might be a trans woman mm-hmm. who has a, a service to teach trans females how to act like a woman. Right. And I saw this, and I was fascinated by it, because I thought, in a way, it was a very exaggerated... Right. I think that happens to trans guys, too. They they may go slam on male and start and for the young guys that are wearing their baseball cap backwards and getting tattoos uh-huh. and strutting around but i will say that there was some magic to it i could i was totally entranced by it i mean mm-hmm. and it wasn't just as an oddity or something i found her attractive and the, her you know hyper feminine i found it sexy i mean it, and mm-hmm. and you know i don't I wouldn't know how to do that. <laughs> yeah, so hey, maybe, you know, after we end this, I'm going to start making some... Because <laughs> 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 I could see the appeal, you know, especially yeah. I was fear of surgery, so... But, yeah. I don't know, but... um. Well, basically, for me, it just came down to the fact that my folks are gone. I've tried everything in my life to be happy or at least comfortable, and I'm not getting any younger, and if I'm going to do it, I just do it, and... The conclusions I come to later in life is that you don't need permission to do anything. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't need permission to be a fabulous performer. You don't have to have permission to be an artist, you know. I don't need permission to be male if that's who I am. And I'm I'm tired of waiting around for the world to accept me. I'm just going to do my shit. <laughs> do my thing and... You know, if they can deal with it, fine. If they can't, they're not going to die. So I just want to ask you one more question. And um, have, <clears throat> have you found that, have you learned anything about yourself as you've transitioned that you could identify as whether you're male or female, that this is me? And no matter who, you know, which gender you are, this is going to stay the same. Um, what is your essential nature? That do, you're asking what I have learned that to- tells me this is the right thing to do? No. What I'm asking is um, uh, that you, who you are, okay, it's not as if you're going to become a totally different person when mm-hmm. you have gone yeah, through. Yeah, I think a lot of people what, expect that, and but that's not true. What I'm wondering is, have you... Uh, discovered anything in trying to picture yourself as a man as opposed to a woman um, that you can say, wow, this is me no matter what. If I was a woman, if I was a man, this... Oh, yeah. What are those things? Do you know... Um, as far as my characteristics... Yeah, I guess so, yeah. I'm always going to be, um, I don't know, insightful and humorous mm-hmm. and trying to find humor in situations. I have found a lot of patience, though, hmm. because this is a very long process, and, and there's only so many times you can go to the mirror and check to see if the hair is growing, hmm. you know? So you have to be very patient, and I don't know. I I think I'm always just going to be kind of a, a outspoken, hmm. um, rather comedic, Mm-hmm. personality mm-hmm. you know and I haven't mm-hmm. been writing but I need to start writing again but uh, it's hard to think of what to say it's uh, the process is still happening mm-hmm. you know but you're excited oh, you yeah. Tell. oh yeah that's cool